Well, you probably guessed what was coming next. We did numerical, graphical, and algebraic looks at our derivatives. So now we've got a verbal one with a word problem because we always want to be able to understand how these things work in the real world, as they say. So this is a carbon-14 problem. Remember carbon-14 we talked about the first uh, night. Is we use it for radioactive uh, dating of old, old specimens. So suppose that you have a sample of 1,000 grams of carbon-14. Remember, that has a half-life of 5,730 years. Right now, at what rate will its mass be changing 2,000 years from now? And we like to give an answer correct to three decimal places, meaning we are going to get out the calculator this time. So as usual, let's try to think about what a reasonable answer would be. So the half-life is 5730 years. It doesn't decay very quickly. So it's going to be pretty small, the rate of change. And will the rate of change be positive or negative? I hope you're saying that it'll be negative because the quantity is decaying, right? If you looked at the graph of this, it's an exponential decay, so the slope should be negative. Well, what do we need to do first? We need something to take the derivative of, so we must need an equation. So let's write our formula for C of t. <coughs> this is one of these half-life problems, so it's an exponential function, so it takes the form p naught times a to the t. p naught is the amount of time zero, so that's our 10,000. And then we're uh, keeping half of it, so we're multiplying by 0 0.5. And if I write it to the t, it's being cut in half every year. That's much too fast, right? So we talked the first week about how to fix that. We slow it down by writing t over 5730. And then we can confirm if, if we plug in c of 5730, the exponent becomes 1. We get 10,000 times 0 0.5, 5,000. So we've lost half of it in the first 5,730 years, which is exactly how it's supposed to work. Now, can we take the derivative of the way this is written? Not quite, right? Because we want to have just a t in the exponent, not t over 5,730. So just as we did in those last two examples, we're going to have to first rewrite this as just something to the t. So I can write it as 0 0.5 to the 1 over 5,730 all raised to the tth power because our third exponent rule says that I would multiply this t in and get t over 5730, which is just what we're supposed to get. So now we can take the derivative using our, exponent, our exponential rule. The 1,000 is a multiplying constant, so the constant multiple rule says it stays. And then we have something of the form b to the t. Right? Our rule said b to the x, but it doesn't matter what the variable is. t, x, all the same thing. So the derivative of b to the t should be b to the t natural log of b. So it should be 0 0.5, 1, to the 57, 1 over 5730, raised to the t, and then times the natural log of this quantity, 0 0.5 to the 1 over 5730. So that, not especially pretty equation, tells you the rate of change at any given moment. And we're supposed to evaluate this at time 2,000. So C prime of 2,000, we'll just plug in 2,000. And remember what we said, we were expecting what kind of answer here? We were expecting a negative. Are you getting worried about that? Because I don't see any minus signs on the chalkboard. So all I did here was plug in the 2,000 for t. So we expect this to be negative, and it is in fact negative. Even though there's no negative sign on the chalkboard, why is this negative? It's because we're taking the log. This number is actually a number less than 1. And if you think back to how the graph of the natural log function looks, natural log of 1 is 0. Natural log of a number less than 1 is a negative number. So when you, if you were to put this into your calculator, you would get a negative number. That's how we end up with a negative. So this ends up being, correct to three decimal places, negative 0 0.950. And what should the units on this be? The original function was grams as a function of time. The derivative is a slope. And remember, slope we always get by taking change in y over change in x. So in this case, the units on the vertical were grams, and on the horizontal were years. So we've got grams per So that's how fast this is decaying exponentially. 
2,000 years from now. And we have a check your understanding, or you'll get a chance to practice this on your own right now.